Hi, I'm Morgan, and today I wanted to talk to you about the books that I read in the month of May. I only read six books, which isn't a lot for me, but I'm pretty happy, considering I had a lot of, um, of exams in that month, so it was a bit hectic. But uh, let me talk about them now. As always, I will go from the one I like the least to the one I like the most. So, the book I liked the least in May was White by Brett Easton Ellis. I listened to the audiobook, which was narrated by him. And the thing about this book is that I really don't understand who it is made for, because half of this book was him talking to about um, how he came up with his ideas for his books, which I really enjoyed because Brett Easton Ellis is one of my favorite authors. But then um, he went on to talk about um, some movies and what he thought about them. Again, I quite enjoyed. But like the latter half of this book was all about him telling you his views on Generation Wuss, as he calls it. So he calls the generation of millennials today uh, Wuss because they make themselves out as victims, he thinks. And also he was talking so much about how um, this generation was so mad that Donald Trump was elected but that he was still always telling them that there's nothing they can do about it and like just I don't understand who this book is made for I mean either it is made for people who are actually interested in his work then they don't care about that or it's for people who are just interested in I don't know his views on things but like really who cares I mean seriously who cares I, I don't understand it because People who read this will either already agree with him and so they will just be happy that they found, again, someone who agrees with them or they already don't agree with him and they're just not going to agree. Like, I'm not saying that people should never give their opinions. I'm just saying that there was no point putting it in a book. And, I don't know, this was sold as kind of as non-fiction and it felt a lot like a memoir and a bit of opinions that weren't really that interesting in the end, unfortunately. And I know now why I always need, it, need a book to have a point, because if it doesn't then that means that I'm wasting my time reading it and I don't want to waste my time reading a book or feel like I'm wasting my time, so that was a bit of a letdown. But I did like um, to know more about his life and about his work, which, uh, which I did get. So, that's something. The next book I'm going to talk about is another one I listened to on audiobook, and that is The Calculating Stars by Mary Rubinette Kowal. She narrates the audiobook. It's a science fiction novel about a woman in the 1980s, 60s, I honestly don't remember anymore, but um, somewhere around that. And she is basically the only woman who works in science. She's very smart and um, there's, at the beginning of the book, there's this meteorite that falls on the earth that causes a lot of problems. A lot of people die for once, which is something important, but other than that, it just creates a lot of problems for um, for the planet that she tries to solve, but a lot of the population doesn't want to acknowledge that there is a problem and just, it becomes a whole thing. And her husband is also an engineer, so he, they end up working together a lot. The thing uh, is about this book, so you have uh, a lot of misogyny in it. 
as you would expect, I guess, uh, because it was in, well, the 1960s or 80s or whatever, there weren't a lot of women in science. I mean, obviously that it is a fiction, but it feels very real, I guess. And I thought the book was quite good, the writing was cool, but it's just that you're told over and over again how she's really good at adding in her head and just doing science stuff basically that no one else can do as fast as her and just it gets annoying at some point like I don't need to be told again and again the same thing it's just, it's just repetitive you know and obviously like I just she had a lot of anxiety also she especially in front of crowds which you know was I guess an interesting part of her but Again, so, like, this this is a series, and the series is called The Lady Astronaut because she is trying to get into space and become a lady astronaut, but she doesn't want to be called Lady Astronaut because in the beginning of the book she can't actually go to space because women are not allowed to go to space. And, I don't know, like, she just had a few things that she didn't want that like were just kind of annoying like you could just say yes to things sometimes and just not be annoying <laughs> I don't know um, but other than that I did quite like this book the the problems there were a lot of I mean uh, yeah also one thing I forgot that was a bit cringy were like there were not exactly sex scenes but the beginnings of one between her and her husband and they always um, talked science to get themselves in the mood and that was just so weird I mean I do science but like no one would actually talk about science to get excited for sex like it's just weird but um, yeah just a silly detail but there were a few scenes like that that I was just shaking my head about um, but yeah, quite a solid book though. Next, I want to talk to you about The Fortress of the Pearl. Uh, it's in the series Elric. I read the first one in March, I think. I quite enjoyed that one and this one. It's by Michael Moorcock. This book is the first, well, is the second one in this series and this series goes into a bigger picture called the eternal champion uh, basically in each of the series you're in a different universe kind of and all these universes are parallel so you have parallel universes and all these universes form the multiverse and it's really good um, I think I said in my review of the first one that his writing wasn't great um, but that's not really what I meant, it's just that his writing is very simple. We follow in Elric the character of Elric, who is an albino. He has um, red eyes and has very pale skin. He's like very distinctive, I guess. And he's not perfect, but he's really interesting and I like him. And the story also I quite like, it was well told, and we had a lot of characters in it, new characters, because Elric wants to explore a bit of the world, and I just, I re I'm really liking this series, and I'm looking forward to continuing on with it. The next book I have to talk to you about is L Love from A to Z by S.K. Ali. This book I heard about first on Chaos channel for Books and Lala and also on Matthew Sharapa's channel. They both said how good this book was and I agree. In this book we follow Zeynep who is a teenager in the US and gets suspended from school because she made aggressive drawings of her teacher but her teacher is most definitely an Islamophobe 
and he tries to to convince people in his class that mu the Muslim religion is the reason many people die and that well it's not good you know um, so she gets mad and she wants to find a way to get him fired that's how it starts and as she gets suspended she gets sent to her aunt who lives in the UK she wears a hijab and gets a lot of crap of people every single day so this book is a lot about Islamophobia and other things also, just being a teenager and we're in her head. Um, we see how she struggles with people and also in the airport going to the UK she meets this guy, Adam, who she's in, she gets, she's interested in, but, um, but so what she doesn't know is that this boy Adam knows her aunt, so she sees him on and off while she's on vacation in the UK. Her mother comes to join her at some point also in the UK. And it's a story of Zainab and Adam. Adam also has uh, a very interesting life. He has a sister and... Um, his mother died a few years ago. His dad is still here, works and he works in a school with uh, Zainab's aunt and it's just it's really sweet. It's a YA romance novel and uh, we see the romance blooming between the two but also you have a lot of things that are really hard hitting. One, because of the Islamophobia, but also because um, Adam's mom died because she was sick a few years before, and there are the things linked to that. I don't want to say more, but it was really hard hitting. It was very well written. I, I really enjoyed it. Um, I just didn't like the few parts where they. There were too many mentions of Harry Potter in it. I mean, I love Harry Potter, but just sometimes it's a bit much. This book is just really good and I really enjoyed it and I hope to read it. The next book I have to talk about is We Are Okay by Nimella Kaur. We Are Okay is about a girl whose grandpa died and then she, instead of facing on her friends and going to the funeral and everything, she just up and left to go to school um, because she couldn't handle things. She found out some things right before her grandpa died. Her parents have been dead for a long time and so everything is just really hard on her. She doesn't have a lot of money. She tries and she does get some money because her grandpa dies but um, overall it's just really hard on her and she just really struggles because she found out some kind of terrible things right before her grandpa died and she didn't have time to talk to him about them so so just it's really hard <laughs> you know um, this book was really, really hard hitting. She there's also a female female relationship because before she left her hometown, she was kind of in a relationship with her best friend. But so as she just left like that, she never returned anyone's calls either. So her friend comes and. Um, comes for vacations in her college town and stays over. The story is told both in the present, so 
um, when she's in college during um, during during winter vacation and also in flashbacks before her grandpa died and a, a little bit after um, it was just really really beautiful and hard um, it's a lot about grief it talks a lot also about the relationship between um, between the two women and I just really really liked it I thought it was beautiful um, the last book I have to talk about quickly is the third Harry Potter uh, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban this was a reread for me I just uh, want to reread all of the series as I have never done so um, so this was the third one I won't tell you what it's about because you probably already know but it was really enjoyable as they always are and actually I'm getting to like the third one more and more um, so that's cool anyway that's all for me Thank you for watching. Please tell me um, some books you've read in May uh, that you've really enjoyed and I hope to see you soon in another video. Please subscribe if you want to and goodbye. Dream I know, deep up my feelings, feelings.